at this point, it feels like every season I'm just balancing back and forth with Attack Eradicator, where one season I'm making an AR build and the next I'm making an LMG build. And it's pretty simple. This thing's very good well, with both. For slow paced players, the LMG long range build is going to be a very good option. For the aggressive players like myself, the AR build is a very good option. It's just a very versatile LMG that in some circumstances doesn't even feel that way. I don't know if it's the iron sights or the fire rate. It just reminds me a ton of the hammer back from Black Ops 2, and I just can't get that out of my head. That was one of my favorite weapons back in that game. Very unique, and I think that plays the same part here in Modern Warfare 3. For my first attachment here, I have the Tacvert Core Stock to target gun kick, fire aiming stability, and recoil control. Self-explanatory here, we're gonna get a massive 23% to the gun kick, 5% to the horizontally and vertical recoil control. Well, yes, it does slow down the weapon via sprint to fire speed and other mobility. When you're building a slow paced weapon or a slow paced build, this attachment is necessary. Another attachment that's targeting recoil control and fire aiming stability is the FSS combat grip. Self-explanatory can help you hit your shots with 10% to the gun kick, 7% to the horizontal and vertical recoil control. Over here to an under barrel, I have the X10 Phantom 5 hand stop that's going to give you aim down sight speed, sprint to fire speed, Vertical recoil control and gun kick control. I just felt like it needed to be a little faster, which is why I did choose this attachment. It's going to increase the ADS by 6%, sprint to fire speed by 7%, and then some smaller values there towards recoil control, which is still important at the end of the day. Now, this is a muzzle I've never really run on the TAC Eradicator, and that's the L4R Flash Hider, which it's going to sacrifice aim down sight speed, which is why I felt the last attachment was necessary. But this is going to be quite massive in the forms of recoil control, 13% to the gun kick, 10% to the horizontal recoil control, and 13% to the vertical recoil control at the sacrifice of 6% there to that aim down sight speed, which we ended up gaining back with the Phantom 5 hand stop. And my final attachment is the Conquer 70 long barrel for that bullet velocity and damage range. You're gonna need an attachment just like this one when building a long range build or just using an LMG in general, you wanna maximize on that damage range, giving you a 25% increase here, along with 30% additional to the bullet velocity. LMGs are probably the least viewed weapons on my channel, and I get it, they're not a very popular Call of Duty weapon, but I still like to cover them because personally, I've been slowly enjoying them. I'm not like slowing down as far as play style goes, they just always hit really hard, and they're really satisfying because of the large ammo capacity. I don't know what it is, like I said, not very popular, but it's hard to not use when I enjoy them as much as I have been. So there's gonna be the rest of my loadout on the screen. If you guys also wanted to pause to copy these ones down, make sure you guys are hitting the like and subscribe button for me. Let's get into sub base featuring this, this get higher camo. I like it, kind of distracting, but really like it. Yeah, let's get into it. So during this season, I have plans for a lot of MW2 weapons, weapons I haven't covered yet. I don't want to spoil what weapons, but I'm sure you guys can probably figure out exactly what weapons I am talking about. Gotten to that point where there's so many weapons in the game and I don't want to keep reusing. I don't want to keep reusing these same class setups, the same weapons, you know what I mean? I want to get creative with it, and I know they're releasing some aftermarket parts there for, I believe, the Rawl and the RPK at some point. Oh, this is going to be a good one. This is chaotic. This is going to be a good one. All right, so the majority of them are in tunnel right there. They might all be in tunnel. Hold the phone. I'm gonna retreat here because the hill's about to flip, which means they're probably, oh, my team's got a huge lead, dude. My team's got a huge lead somehow, and that was really chaotic, which is surprising. Like my team was had it locked, you know what I mean? The other team was relentless on the pressure though, so it's, okay. They just can't get close. The spawns might've flipped to the back. No, my team just spawned there, so I'm actually unsure at the moment. I'm just going to play patiently here. Yeah, see, my team's right there. But there's also a guy in the back. Huh. 
I'm gonna hit the advanced UAV now. Rather know where I'm supposed to be looking here. It looks like they're gonna be split here. They got people in the back, but they also got people over here. All right, I'm just gonna go this way. Here we go. I'm gonna veto it now. All on middle map. I can't push up though. Because the VTOL is going to drop. I got to stay back. Okay. That was big information. I'm glad I snuck that through. Thank you for coming. I put my veto in a great spot actually for right now. Like that low key might lock me in the DNA bomb by itself. Well, never mind. They shot it down. Spoke a little too soon there. It's a big advanced UAV. We'll go with this. We're gonna drop that in the back. And it didn't pick up the kill like I wanted it to. This guy over here on my left is putting me in an awkward situation. Right here. Well. Bruce Wayne finally got me, but I got the DNA bomb. So people always tell me to run like the Jack BFB muzzle and stuff, but do you wait for this advanced UAV to disappear, man? You guys are going to really see what the hell I'm talking about. When I say this thing's like, you are a walking advanced UAV. I need to. I need a UAV. All right, let's hit that so I can see. See, so you see the dot on the mini map right here? This is what you guys look like, man. That's what I don't think people understand about that. Like, you are such an easy target. Like, I promise you, I'm chasing you. I'm dead. When I see that advanced UAV dot on the mini map, I promise you, I am chasing you down. I promise you. Um,. So I guess I'll spoil a little bit that ISO 9mm is a weapon I definitely plan on using. I made a setup in Season 1 because I thought that was one of the better weapons in the game, or SMGs, I should say. Oh, we're... I'm fighting demons over here, man. Look at them. You guys toyed around with my emotions. That's what you did. We're up 42. Oh, that's tough, dude. You ran out of ammo. That's a tough gunfight to take. There we go. UAV's in. I wish this other team would jump the hill. I do not want to hit this DNA bomb. It's not what I'm trying to do right now. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. Oh, my goodness. I almost worked on two of them. All right. I suppose I could go with the DNA bomb now because I don't want to not call it in, especially because I'm so far away. They should still probably spawn in the back there, I would assume. I'm dying to cluster mines in 2024. I didn't even know people ran that streak.
That's like the hunter killer or the mosquito drone. I was dying to the, I, I've run into less of that lately. I used to die to mosquito drones almost every single game. That was a little spree. There's three of them there. Oh, thanks for coming. This is going to probably wrap up the game, to be honest. Like, this hill right here might end it, unless they find a way to break. They might get a break here, simply because I think my team split, flipped the spawns. Yeah, that's going to be it. Wait, nope, the game's not over. Not yet, at least. One person touches the hill and this game's over. Doesn't look, oh, my team just touched it. 77 kills over on sub base. Showing you why the Tack Eradicator is one of my favorites.